and I will forget. Um, so I'll start sharing my screen. Okay. So again, this is um, CSET 3, multiple subjects, so physical education, human development, and visual and performing arts. Um, so again, we'll go over some background information, CSET scoring, um, and some sample questions and general suggestions for preparation. Um, so again, mainly CSET is only offered online as computer-based testing. Um, this is basically how you register again, get familiar with the CTC website. Um, and then that's where you register, you get your exams. Uh, it says right here two to three weeks, but uh, is it five weeks still, Natalie? For the... Um, uh -huh. It depends on when you take it. So they release the scores um, on certain dates. So if you take it like toward the end of the um, end of the deadline, then you'll get it earlier. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So again, what is C set? So three subsets. Um, so I think we're focusing on subset three today. So again, physical education human development and visual performing arts all have uh, 13 multiple choice questions in them and they all also have um, one uh, concerted response for each one as well and um, subset three is two hours and 25 minutes or two, is it two hours and 15 Natalie um is it no two? it's yeah it's Okay. Sorry, I have really bad. It's okay. Don't worry. No, don't worry about it. Um, okay. I, I do know that it is shorter than the other one. What was it? Sorry, you kind of cut off a little. I think you cut off a little, but we'll. I don't know if you wanted to add something right now. No. Oh, I cut off. Sorry. Yeah, I, I was just yeah. saying that it's shorter than the other two steps. Yes. Yeah, definitely. It is. It is shorter. Um, so how I see set score to specifically for the multiple subject we talked about this before, it is 70% um, based on your multiple choice answers and 30% based on your constructive response. Um, so again, I mentioned this before. Um, so what they do is you get a raw score and the raw score is converted on a scale from 100 to 300 and you need a 220 to pass. Whatever subset it is, um, you need a 220 to pass. And um, again, again, based on 70% of the multiple choice and 30% of the constructive response. And these are some of the things um, to think about when you're doing your constructive response response that they will grade you. Um, your relevance, right, is, is your response on topic. Um, I think one of the big things is do not leave it blank. Um, your accuracy, so are you responding to all the parts that they're asking you about? We read the prompt to make sure you have answered all the parts. And details, um, supporting details um, tied to prompts. So give appropriate examples to support the statement, right? You need to have that support um, from your, um, your responses. Um, I don't know, Natalie, if you wanted to add something. Yeah, so they grade the constructed responses based off of purpose, um, knowledge, and I always forget the third one. Purpose, knowledge, um, and support. So when you're, when you're answering a constructed response, if you just can answer the question, then they'll take off points because you still need to have that support on why that's the answer. So those are like the three kind of, um, the three kind of ways that they grade you on the constructed responses. Yeah. Um, so again, just general suggestions. Um, determine your strengths and weaknesses. So take the practices. I think that's the 
first step that we always tell students is take the practices on the CTC exams website. And if you have trouble accessing that, we can show you how to access that. Um, so analyze the responses. So um, based on like, do you, did you get it right? Did you get it wrong? Why did you get it wrong? So sometimes with problems, sometimes it's just more like, uh, what did I miss sometimes? So analyzing that from your practice test there, your very first step can determine like where you need to study and then like how you need to study. I think that also is a big deal because um, I think Natalie, Natalie and Mariela will tell you like there's a lot of different ways to study for this test and there's different ways. Um, but I think first taking the practices and seeing what they ask can help you. Yeah. Okay. So just a couple more strategies. I would see your positive attitude comes from preparation, um, right? We don't suggest just going straight into this test. Um, if it's, um, you take one test at a time, start with your strengths, right? Easy to difficult, something that, um, the problems that you can start off first or the subtest that you can start off first. Um, just, you know, pre-test day routine, rise and nutrition, and then uh, process elimination. Um, some simple strategies. Um, let me see, I actually... Yeah, so the, the good thing about taking the computer test is that um, you can jump around through the area, through the different topics. So say child development is your strong, then you can start with those questions. And they have it Yeah. Um, so that's also a good thing that we had talked about before is about moving uh, or flagging and moving around to the um, questions that always helps, especially if you are running low on time. And then the good thing also about the practices online through the CTC exam website is it actually times you, um, which is good for practicing time management, kind of like figuring out how long are you taking on your problems, um, which is really good, I think, because sometimes I think it's nerve wracking to take any kind of test. Um, and so, you know, timing yourself is also uh, really good on that. So we'll go ahead and start with the domains. Um, so this is a physical education domains. Uh, so the domain one, obviously movement skills and uh, movement knowledge. So basic movement skills exercise uh, physiology, health and physical fitness, movement forms. Um, domain two is self-image and personal development. So self-image, personal growth. Um, and then the last one is social development, so social aspects of physical education, um, cultural and historical aspects of movement forms. Um, Natalie, I don't know if you wanted to add something on that, like kind of like, well, I'll go over the questions, but if you wanna like mention something about the domains. Um, I would just say that when you're studying, break it up between each domain so that it, it doesn't seem too overwhelming because there is a lot of information in there. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so this one is, um, not sure if you wanted to go over this one. Um, but so this is kind of like these some some of the example questions that we have. Um, so so kindergarten introductory physical education lesson includes the following activity. The teacher instructs students to walk forward for eight counts using high steps and walk backwards for eight counts using low steps. So this is kind of like a sample question that you might have for this test. Um, and um, here's the reason why. So for something like that, it would be rhythmic movements uh, because rhythmic movements include movement activities that children are familiar with, like walking, running, and jumping. It teaches students how to coordinate uh, their body. Natalie, I don't know if you wanted to add something about like physical education, some of these, like. Yeah, so um, 
um, make sure that you're familiar with the different um, requirements. The kids, you know, play a basketball game because they can't run and dribble a ball at the same time. So one thing that I know pops up on the test for sure is the difference between third grade and sixth grade. Um, in sixth grade, they're expected to be able to dribble a ball while running. And in third grade, they're not. So they're third grade, they're kind of still learning how to dribble a ball because they're still learning that hand-eye coordination and foot-eye coordination. Yeah. Um, did you want to go to the next one? So I'll just kind of show you all kind of like some of the examples that we've had um, that um, that students that have been tutoring for this have seen before. So again, like which of the following activities is an example of a manipulative skill. Um, so you have these options. Um, so again, you want to know what a manipulative skill is, right? So is one with the child handles an object with the hand, feet, or other body parts. Um, so those are some of the things that you want to um, kind of look into. This PowerPoint has a lot of slides. Um, and I think I'll go, the next one is, Oh, this one talks about the constructive response. So this is an example of a constructive response in the physical education area. Um, so I'll read it out and then um, yes, so go for it. Um, I hope I'm not cutting. No, you're good. It, 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 it sounds better than that. Yeah. Reception here, but um, I wanted to say for the physical that for the physical education portion, you're just gonna get questions about like sports and exercising. You're also gonna get questions about health. I thought it was a great example because um, it's mixed together and it's kind of embarrassed to change into her PE clothing and it's asking you to determine the reason why that might and I think the answer I split it up. Answer slide. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so here it is. So one cause could be that she's she probably doesn't want to be made fun of by her fellow classmates because she might be a overweight. Um, and then it's important as teachers to be familiar familiar with the ways that you can kind of handle that situation without straight up telling the student like you need to lose weight because you shouldn't talk to kids like that but um yeah so suggesting a weight loss program maybe to the parents um or even just helping the student determine the cause on their own of why they might be feeling embarrassed to change mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, Mariela had talked about this before, even for, I believe it was the English, so subset one. Um, so this, this, this kind of correlates with that one as well, where um, you were given an example about a student who was misspelling um, words, and um, you were kind of given that situation of what would you do as a teacher? Um, so again, mm -hmm. the constructive response kind of is kind of goes hand in hand with all of the subtests, right? They they want you to identify the problem and as well as give information about how you would solve it. So studying for all yep. these tests are kind of correlated. So just think about that, right? So just like in PE, right, you have this situation and the constructive response wants you to like, how would you talk about it? And so again, this was very mm -hmm. much this goes for physical education, which is something that I noticed that y'all were talking about on, um, was it Wednesday, when we were talking about tips at Yeah. So answer these questions as if you're a teacher. Pretend you're a teacher of record right now and answer them how you think you would um, handle these kinds of situa situations. 
Yeah, definitely. And that's also what I say for the math section subset too. Mm -hmm. I always say answer, answer the math problem like you were talking to a student. How would you explain to this, right? So little definitions like what is a yeah. square, like all those things, they, it kind of plays in for all the concerted response throughout the whole multiple subject C set. So it's a good observation um, to have. Mm -hmm. And feel free if um, anyone has any questions, you can send it. You can either stop us at any moment or you can also send it through the chat. I have it open so I'll be able to see any questions that you have. Um, so this is another, I uh, think, uh, PE um, question. I'm wondering if, okay. So then the next uh, portion is the human development portion. Again, you have 13 multiple choice and one concerted response in the human development. So some of the domains are cognitive development from birth through adolescence, and then social and physical development from birth to adolescence again, and influence on development. Um, so it just kind of talks about, you know, like I would say like child development, which is what Natalie would be an expert in. Um, so we'll go over some of, the, uh, some of the questions that they would ask you in this. Um, I would also say that something that Mariela mentioned in the past, um, uh, the past workshops that she noticed that helped her a lot was writing the domains out. So kind of like what I have right now on the PowerPoint, you, you doing that and kind of like taking notes on what each means, what uh, each definition, if there's definitions in each one, um, has helped her as well. And all of this can be found in the CTC exams website which I can also, again, at the very end, kind of give you a, hand, uh, a kind of show you how to get there, kind of what to go through and everything will be there. Um, so this is kind of like one of the questions that, that there is. Um, so it says, which of the following statements is not true about eating disorders among adolescents? Um, so again, you could read, um, a lot of these, I think the process of elimination helps, but um, I think in this case, you have to know kind of what is an eating disorder and what, what, what are common things, right? I think there's kind of two parts and Natalie, you can join in as well, um, right? You have to know one, what are eating disorders and what are common ones um, among adolescents in that age, right? Yeah, so for this question, be fam familiar with like, so adolescents, meaning like um, emerging teenagers, preteens or, or later teenagers, um, you know, how do they picture their, or how do they, how do they view body images? Like they're very insecure at that age because they're going through puberty and their body's changing and, you know, they feel like um, there's this thing in child development called imag the imaginary audience, which is what most teenagers go through where they feel like everybody's watching them and judging them. So that's important to know for this question. Um, and as you're studying, you'll, you'll learn more about like the different stages as for human development, like from birth through adulthood. And that's what they ask you on this test. Yeah, so in this case, um... So they, it, um, this one asked you, right, which one is not true? Um, and so these are some of the, the options. So tr it's true that anorexia and bulimia are higher among adolescent girls from higher socioeconomic backgrounds. It is also true that, um, that binge eaters do not purge their food. And it's also true that many eating disorders are often linked to social, cultural, and physical, physiological factors. Um, so this is kind of like some of the, um, the ways maybe that you can like, um, kind of even do, um, process elimination is understanding kind of what each means. Um, again, you have 13 of these and one constructive response. So I'll go ahead and skip through so you can kind of see what a constructive response in, um, in, uh, human development is like. I think this one is not bad. Okay, so this one, let me go back. So this is kind of a constructive response you might get in um, the physical, the human development. Um, so it says, using your knowledge of cognitive development, discuss why a child would have a difficulty 
organizing a series of log sticks from shortest to longest. Um, so I don't know, Natalie, if you wanted to take over, kind of explain this one. Yeah, so for this, I would say really get familiar with Piaget and Vygotsky and all those um, child development theorists because they there's a lot of questions based on their research. Um, so there's there's a study that was done on children and the way that they organize different lengths of sticks. So here it says that um, this child is having difficulty. So what age would they be? Probably be the youngest age because they don't understand um, the differences in lengths yet. And then give another example of a different, of a cognitive development task. Um, if you can go to the yeah. answer. Let's see, what did I put there? Um, centration. Okay, so yeah, so the age here would be around two to six is when they have difficulty rearranging these sticks. Um, and then another task that they would also have difficulty with is centration, which is the inability to focus on more than one thing at a time. And I'm sure you all have noticed this with little kids that they, their attention span is not that much um, and they get distracted pretty easily. So that's one reason why they would have difficulty with this task. Yeah, so that's one of the examples that we have. And so the next, um, the next portion of this CSET is um, visual performing arts. And even in this, there is more domain. Uh, we have dance, music, theater, and visual arts. Um, and so I'll show you some of the um, questions that we have on here. Um, and I think that there's also some potential response of what they look like. Um, so this one's kind of dance, right? So historically, the traditional shape. If I could say one thing oh, about, sorry, if I could just say one thing about this part, uh -huh. the visual performing arts, yes, it looks very overwhelming because it has four different parts, but the, the all, all the, Elements of dance, the elements of the elements of the of art. And what you can do is go to YouTube and just type in elements of dance, and then you know you'll find a video that explains it all and make flashcards and just memorize those elements. Okay, I'll repeat kind of what you said because you cut off. You were talking about. Um, understanding the elements of each one, right? So elements of dance, elements of music for each one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then you said, right, go on YouTube and you can find a lot of these on there. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they have videos for each of them. Okay, perfect. Okay, so again, this is kind of like one of the, the dance questions. So historically the traditional shake Shape of a folk dance is based on what? Um, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to this question. Um, no, honestly, the, the dance part is very random. I got a question that was asking me like what where tinkling is from, which is the name of a dance. Find another video that's that would be very helpful as well. And just familiarize yourself with the different dances from around the world. Okay. Yeah. So different dances around the world. Um so I think that one has to do with dance as well. Let me see. This one has dance. So one, I'll go to music. So Again, this is kind of one of the music ones. Um, so blues music is kind of jazz that evolved from the music of what? Um, so maybe knowing more about the background of music, what 
to what extent would you say music um, that like what kind of studying would they have to do for music? Um, for music, know how to read basic music. So know like um, know where the notes are on a staff, which if you're not familiar with that, then you got a lot of studying to do because that will show up on the test. Um, that's, that's one area where I spent a lot of my time because you do know, you need to know how to read um, notes on a, on a staff and also be familiar with the sharps and the flats um, and different instruments. So know the, the family of the instr instruments. So like strings, you'll find guitars, um, the cello and things like that. And then for percussion will be drums. Um, what else is there? can't think of anything else off the top of my head but those are the different like instrumental groups that you need to be familiar with yeah and i wonder if there's a couple and um maybe there's a yeah there's one right, right. There. So this one blank is a set of five horizontal lines and four spaces this is where notes are positioned how right so how are the notes positioned yeah so that's the staff that i was talking about yeah. Um, and I think I put a picture in there, actually. Yeah, right here. There we yeah. go. So that's the stuff. And then know that that symbol right there is called um, a treble clef. There's just really random questions that they'll ask you. So just knowing everything you can about reading music helps. And again, um, we all show you kind of like, again, one of our main things is Take the practice online, kind of get used to it. You know, you can have YouTube. We also have tutors um, that are available to help you with these type of questions. So if you have any questions, I'll show you our email at the end. So you can also use us as a resource. We also have books um, that we are renting out. Um, right now, do with everything. We just need an email. We just need to tell someone to be there in the office and we can still let you borrow books. Just have to let us know. Um, and so the next one is theater. Actually, I don't think we do. We don't have any domains on theater, huh? I didn't see any. Oh, just, yeah, we I don't did. know what I was thinking. I, we already did that. <laughs> so, um, so again, theater, this is kind of some of them. Um, we can go through, I don't know if you want like some general suggestions. What are some general suggestions for the theater part? Um, for theater, Try to focus more on like olden times, like Shakespeare, um, Shakespeare, Aristotle. So like where theater be began. So Greece, um, they kind of like invented the whole idea of theater. Um, and then again, know the elements of theater. So what makes a play a play, right? There's this, there's this setting. Um, the the costumes, the lighting, all those little elements. Be familiar familiar with those. Um, and I think that the last one is the visual arts part. Um, so, do you want to go ahead and kind of talk about that one? Uh, um, this was Miriam's thing. But but from what I know is kind of take a look at art from different times. So like cubism, if you're familiar with that, that was Pablo Picasso. And just take a look at some of his um, artwork and then kind of just make a note in your head, like what does cubism look like? It looks like different shapes. Um, what colors did he use? Um, yeah, just looking at a lot of artwork for this is important. Um, and then let me see, there's a constructive response here. Um, what, um, what was the comment construct or what, what was the, con the constructive response that you got for the, the for this part? 
for the visual performing arts? Like what kind of question would you say that you got? Um, so they, they kind of, you get a random question. Um, so you get two from music, uh, theater, art, or dance. And mm -hmm. I know that I got a question about visual arts and it was, it was a picture of a vase and it asked me to name three elements of this picture. So that's why I'm saying knowing the elements is really important. Um, I will say that the first time I took subtest three, I didn't pass it by one point. I got a 219 and you needed a 220 to pass. Um, so I am very familiar with this test. And if you need tutoring, I did, I did um, make up my own PowerPoint based off of the information from teacher's test prep. So yeah, just reach out to me and we can do a Zoom tutoring session because this is, this one's my test. I know it really, really well just because I didn't pass it the first time. Yeah, definitely. I think we have a slide on that, right? So again, preparation is key. We have, we, like uh, Natalie mentioned, we have the resources and the study, um, right? There's, we have tutoring sessions through Zoom. We are doing them through Zoom now. Uh, but we do have a lot of, um, we have books that you can borrow. You know, we have a lot of the uh, testing strategies, like we said. There's videos. Um, Natalie made her own because it helped her, right? We have a couple of your mentors that have taken this test. Uh, Mariela has as well. She wasn't able to join us. But um, we we just kind of wanted to give you a little, like, get your feet wet into what the CSET is, what type of questions they ask you what you should know, um, what helped, um, like Natalie and Mariela, what helped them and what can help you as well. So um, if you have any more questions, again, our email is right here. It's edeq at csus.edu. Just feel free to email us um, with any questions and one of us can respond. We all have access to it, so we cannot definitely help you. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have any questions right now that you would want to ask um if you don't then thank you for joining us again um thank you for being here on friday i hope you all have a great day and a great weekend if there's any if there's any questions i'll kind of wait a little if you have any questions oh good thank you so much thank you thank you for joining us all right have a great day and a great weekend um there no we different but yeah Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.